Hello everyone, uh, in this lecture uh, we are going to introduce combustion process and as you all know it is a fundamental process by which uh, the thermal energy uh, or the chemical energy of the fuel is converted to the thermal energy and this thermal energy essentially we make use of in a thermodynamic process to get meaningful work or useful work out for our IC engine. So, understanding of combustion, how exactly combustion takes place, what are the parameters which govern combustion and how can we efficiently burn a given fuel in a given time, in a given amount for example, uh, inside the IC engine uh, is, is, is of paramount importance to design a particular uh, engine. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the emission uh, let us say characteristics of that particular engine. Uh, so, we will start with uh, introduction to the combustion. So, uh, as you all know, uh, for any combustion process to take place, we require three elements, the fuel, something that will burn. So, if you define a fuel, it is any material that can be burned to release thermal energy. Uh, of course, we are interested to, uh, we are interested a fuel in such a way that uh, it will be uh, let us say uh, applicable to be burnt inside a reciprocating type of a cylinder mechanism uh, inside an IC engine in a given amount of time we should be able to put that fuel inside. So, you naturally you cannot take solid fuels for example, uh, some of the examples of gaseous fuels are liquefied petroleum gas as you all know we use it for cooking at home. Uh, then of course, wood and coal of course, are also you all know that they are burnt and uh, we can get let us say. Uh, energy out of them. Uh, these can be typically used for an external combustion engine. Uh, uh, for example, a boiler uh, wherein you can burn coal and convert the water into steam and run a turbine. So, that is an external combustion engine. So, typically for internal combustion engines, we will be using the liquid fuel uh, and uh, let us say uh, gaseous fuels. And of course, once you have the fuel, you need an oxidizer. And now, the most commonly used oxidizer is air. Uh, as you all know, it is a mixture of uh, primarily oxygen and nitrogen. So, we use air and then when these two things are available, then you need some heat. Uh, so, as you all know, uh, in a petrol engine, we will get this heat or we will start the combustion with the assistance of a spark plug or electrical discharge inside the combustion chamber. And in case of a diesel engine, we will actually compress uh, the, the air, this air is compressed to such an extent. Uh, that the temperature is high and there is enough enthalpy in the air uh, and the temperature has crossed the particular limit uh, and then at that time the liquid diesel is injected inside let us say uh, as an example in, in, in a diesel engine. So, uh, most fu uh, familiar fuels which we all use uh, for example, LPG or even wood on coal, they are primarily organic compounds of hydrogen and carbon and they have a general uh, that is why they are called as hydrocarbon fuels. And I will uh, take another lecture uh, in which we will talk about hydrocarbon fuels separately and their characteristics uh, as applicable to IC engines. Uh, today, we are trying to understand the basics of combustion. So, they are uh, uh, typically denoted by a general formula C n H m for example. Uh, so, number of carbon atoms in that fuel molecule are represented by the number n and the hydrogen molecules are represented by m. And uh, most of uh, the fuels for example, propane, or ethane or uh, ethylene, uh, they are hydrocarbons, uh, but you, you can also have for example, oxygen uh, in the fuel molecule itself. Uh, for example, alcohol uh, can uh, will have an OH radical which is attached to this particular C n H m. So, you will have also O. Uh, you can also have ammonia or nitrogen compounds which are attached. You can also have sulfur compounds which are attached to the organic chains. So, we will discuss the molecules separately in a separate lecture. Uh, for today's lecture, it suffices to say that most of these fuels are hydrocarbon fuels. And of course, uh, as you all know, they exist in all phases. Uh, for example, coal uh, is primarily carbon, which is solid. Gasoline or petrol is, is usually, let us say, has an average molecular distribution of C8. Uh, but as you will study, uh, gasoline is a mixture of several compounds. Uh, whose average carbon content can be taken as C8 for example, depending on what type of petrol you are using. And of course, natural gas which is in the form of gas, you know the examples for example, methane or let us say carbon monoxide can also be used as a fuel, as a gaseous fuel. So, the primary requirement for a combustion process to occur is the availability of fuel, availability of oxygen in, in the form of air usually. 
uh, and of course, heat to initiate the process uh, of combustion. So, uh, enough heat should be available, so that the fuel ignites and starts burning. Uh, a very quick review of uh, how these uh, hydrocarbon fuels are, uh, are obtained. So, most liquid hydrocarbon fuels are obtained from crude oil by distillation process. And in one of the separate lectures, uh, we will have a chance. Essentially, the crude oil which comes from the ground, uh, inside the ground is, is heated up. And uh, depending on the molecular structure uh, uh, from, let us say, uh, uh, C1, C2, C3 to C8 to C, C10s or C20s, uh, the, the, the different components of the crude oil uh, will uh, essentially evaporate at different temperatures or so, so this this vapor is cooled uh, and depending on at what temperature you are cooling, you can get gasoline, you can get kerosene, you can get diesel fuel and you can have fuel oil or heavy oil uh, and things like that. So, most road transport vehicles that means for example, cars or automobiles, they operate on liquid fuels uh, derived from petroleum. Uh, the gaseous fuels like methane or propane for example, which is LPG essentially are also being used in comparatively smaller amounts. Uh, you see more and more natural gas. Uh, let us say being used uh, in automobiles. Uh, for example, the Delhi transport system is completely, uh, let us say, uh, converted to uh, natural gas, a CNG for example. Uh, also, you see several CNG pumps or CNG delivery outlets coming up uh, in the cities, uh, wherein many of the cars are, are, or automobiles are being converted or buses are being converted to CNG. Uh, also, there are LPG uh, based uh, cars which are available uh, in the market. Uh, petroleum crude contains over 25,000 compounds, you know, mainly carbon and hydrogen. So, as I was telling, the carbon percentage or the carbon number uh, in these uh, long hydrocarbon chains can go from uh, as low as C1, C2. Uh, C1 is, of course, uh, methane, for example, CH4 is methane. It has only one uh, carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms, but it can go to uh, uh, a propane or butane or pentane, uh, a dodecane, and so on and so forth and the carbon atom in that molecule continues to increase and depending on whether it is saturated hydrocarbon or unsaturated hydrocarbon, the hydrogen content can also be will vary. Uh, and so, there are so many different types of compounds which are available in the crude oil. Uh, the crude oil also contains, it comes from the earth and it contains sulfur, nitrogen and oxygen as I was telling you. Uh, typical commercial fuel will have over 400 types of compounds. So, uh, uh, when you go to a petrol station, for example, you buy petrol uh, or you buy diesel, uh, uh, typically it is a mixture of over 250 to 400 different types of compounds, uh, depending on which refinery it is coming and how it has been refined, uh, you will get different types of compounds in that particular. So, essentially it is a mixture. Uh, and then of course, to model that mixture, we have to sort of uh, use an average composition uh, of that fuel, whenever we make thermodynamic models, we cannot deal with so many of them uh, together. So, for simple thermodynamic models, uh, we will uh, try to mimic uh, this particular, uh, let us say, uh, mixture with some compound, let us say propane or butane uh, or, or dodecane uh, or, or pentane, for example, as a representative of the mixture of the petrol. So, coming to combustion, the definition of combustion. Uh, it is a chemical reaction of course, as you know, uh, during which a fuel, which is a hydrocarbon in our case, uh, is oxidized and the oxidizer is air as we have said uh, uh, and a large quantity of energy is released. So, the chemical energy of the products okay, uh, are lower than the reactants uh, and therefore, uh, you get uh, some additional enthalpy or additional energy out of the system by which, so it is typically an exothermic uh, reaction. Uh, the oxidizer the most often used in the combustion process is air as I was telling you. Uh, and air, uh, if you see, uh, it is a mixture uh, about 21 percent uh, oxygen and 79 percent nitrogen. And uh, the, of course, if you go in details, uh, it will be 20.9 percent of oxygen, 78.1 percent of nitrogen, uh, 0.9 percent of argon and, and then of course, small amounts of CO2, helium, neon, hydrogen, etcetera. Uh, so, for analysis purpose, for the first level analysis, we can take uh, let us say oxygen as 21 percent uh, and uh, let us say 79 percent of nitrogen uh, by volume that is by mole by mole numbers. So, whenever you take uh, a, a quantity of air let us say uh, 
uh, it will have 21 percent of oxygen, 75 percent of nitrogen. So, if you take 1 kilo mole of oxygen, for every kilo mole of oxygen, you will have uh, 3.76 kilo mole of nitrogen in the air. Uh, and therefore, 1 kilo mole of oxygen plus 3.76 kilo mole of nitrogen will make about 4.76 kilo mole of air. So, this is what you have to remember uh, that each kilo mole of oxygen in air is accompanied by 3.76 kilo mole of nitrogen. So, primarily uh, the mixture will contain oxygen and nitrogen and that is what we will use uh, for our analysis. So, this is what I was telling the reactants for example, are carbon and oxygen. Uh, let us say if you are burning coal, pure coal, pure carbon is burnt. Uh, so, the reactants they enter into a reaction chamber for example, in the case of IC engine, uh, this reaction chamber is the combustion chamber inside the cylinder and then let us say CO2 is formed. Uh, in, in an IC engine of course, we do not burn carbon, uh, this is more of a representative of coal burning in a steam engine for example, or a steam boiler and the products come out. Uh, so, in a steady flow combustion process, the components that enter the reaction chamber are called as reactants and the component that exit are called as product. So, here is one example for example, methane uh, with 1 mole of oxygen and 3.76 mole of nitrogen that is air. So, 4.76 moles of air with, uh, with, with methane uh, uh, are entering a combustion chamber and naturally if, if, if uh, they are converted completely then we will have carbon dioxide and water will come out and the nitrogen will also come out. Of course, this is this does not react it just comes out. Uh, as a product, but mind you if the temperature of methane is at, let us say at room temperature and the air is at room temperature, then the products may not come out at room temperature and the nitrogen will get heated up. So, some part of the energy which is actually coming out which is QCV which is a heat rejection or heat available at constant volume the combustion heat okay, which is the heat in the product minus the heat in the reactants for example, we will discuss this equation in more detail later on. So, this amount of heat part of it comes out, but part of it also raises the temperature of CO2, H2O and nitrogen. So, the enthalpy which goes in with the fuel and the oxidant uh, has certain value. The exhaust product also come out with a certain value of the enthalpy and the difference between these two is what you get uh, to do your meaningful productive work which is QCV. Uh, mentioned uh, on this slide. So, what are the conditions for combustion? We have already seen this photograph. Uh, so, there will be no combustion reaction if any of the above is not available. So, the fuel must be brought above its ignition temperature to start the combustion. So, uh, for example, that is uh, in the petrol engine we do that by a spark plug. In a diesel engine we compress the air and then the ignition temperature is already there in the compressed air at that uh, at the moment when diesel is getting injected into the system. So, this is the first requirement. The minimum ignition temperature in atmosphere air are approximately for example, 260 degrees for gasoline or petrol, uh, 400 degrees for carbon, 580 for hydrogen, uh, 610 for carbon monoxide, 630 for methane. So, you do not have to remember this, these data are given in any standard data book. Uh, however, this gives you a feeling that unless you bring the fuel to this temperature uh, combustion process or the chemical reaction will not start. And then of course, how much of air is present and how much of fuel is present is also an important parameter. So, the proportions of the fuel and air must be in the proper range of combustion to begin. For example, natural gas does not burn in air in concentrations less than 5 percent or greater than 15 percent. That means, there is a lower flammability limit or lower limit uh, how much you can burn and then if there is excess fuel and lack of oxygen, then also it will not burn and in other ways if there is excess of air, too much of excess of air and a little fuel, then also uh, even if you give heat, uh, it, it, it does not usually burn. So, you have to understand that right amount of oxygen or right amount of air or the oxidant and the right amount of fuel must be available in the combustion chamber in a given proportion and then it must be, uh, you, you have to supply the heat in some form either through compression or through a spark plug, uh, so that the combustion will be initiated inside the engine. Now, one thing which is important to know is that whenever a chemical reaction takes place, let us say hydrogen burns with oxygen to form water. Okay. So, the masses will always be conserved. Okay. So, the mass of the product and minus the mass of the reactant is more or less it is completely conserved. Okay. However, okay, 
the total number of moles is not conserved during a chemical reaction. That means, for example, if you take this example, uh, let us say one mole of hydrogen is reacting with half a mole of oxygen to get one mole of water. Okay. If you convert this moles into masses, that means 2 kilogram of hydrogen will react with 16 kilogram of, of, of oxygen, which is half a mole. Okay. So, that is 16 plus 2, 18 kilograms and you will indeed get 18 kilograms of water here. However, if you divide this by the molecular weight of the system, you will get the moles. Okay. So, you will see that the moles are not conserved. Sometimes they can. For example, uh, if you burn methane with 2 moles of oxygen, 1 mole of methane is burnt with 2 moles of oxygen, uh, you get CO2 and H2O, 1 mole of CO2 and 2 moles of H2O. Okay. So, in this case, it is conserved. But in general, you have to remember that mass of the product will always be equal to the mass of the reactants. Okay. However, the moles may not be. So, please do not apply conservation of moles in your equations. So, this is something which you have to uh, understand and remember. Now, as I was telling you uh, that you need certain amount of fuel and certain amount of air or oxidant. Okay. So, the air fuel ratio, how much fuel has been taken and how much air you are taking, the ratio air fuel ratio represents the amount of air used per unit mass of fuel during a combustion process. Uh, typically, we will use the mass basis. So, for example, if you take 1 kg of fuel and 17 kg of air to burn it, then the mass of air divided by the mass of fuel is 17. So, the air fuel ratio is 17 and naturally, since mass is are conserved, uh, you will get the products, uh, 18 kg of products will come out and some amount of heat, which is the heat of combustion will also be available because you are burning the fuel. So, the air fuel ratio is expressed on a mass basis that is what we will typically use in this course. You can also express it in molar basis, but a mass basis will be easy for us to work with. Uh, the, it is defined as the ratio of mass of air. So, mass of air divided by mass of fuel uh, which you take uh, if for the combustion process and therefore, you can also in, in certain books you will see fuel air ratio which is the reciprocal of the mass fuel ratio. And uh, of course, you know that the mass is how it is connected to the, uh, to the moles. So, the number of moles is equal to mass divided by the molecular weight or the molar mass of the substance. So, uh, this, this air fuel ratio is a very important parameter which we will continue to use very frequently and we will see uh, that in terms of a petrol engine, the air fuel ratio is rather low, but in a diesel engine. Uh, you get excess air that means a lot of air is, is given to a diesel engine uh, so that the liquid fuel can burn properly. So, the reasons of this what air fuel ratio is for petrol engine, what air fuel ratio is for diesel engine, uh, we will take it up in a different lecture, uh, but uh, it suffices to tell me uh, tell you uh, that a diesel engine is typically an excess air engine. So, air fuel ratios are higher. So, with this uh, we come to uh, the, the closure of the first lecture on introduction to combustion. Uh, we have understood that three things are needed for burning and we have understood that we need to give them in certain proportion and heat is required for initiation of the combustion and uh, the air fuel ratio uh, is, a, 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 is a good parameter to tell us how much air is there with respect to the amount of fuel which is available for burning and this will we will use this information in the subsequent lectures